Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Wesby here, and I wanted to pop on and talk about fat cells and how they can cause hormonal imbalance, other hormone issues, mess up your cycle, ruin different hormonal shifts and changes of your life, like perimenopause, menopause, all of these things, right? All of these things. This is really important for women to understand because this is not something that we're taught. This is not something that is normal for us to know about. So in sharing this information, my goal is to really get you to understand how the female body functions so you can start working with that specific physiology so that you feel better and you're able to keep results a heck of a lot better. Um, I do have a 12 week challenge. Registration is coming up, so I have a wait list for that. And in the comments, there is the wait list that you can get on if you wanna know more about how to eat for your hormones, your cycle, and really start shifting some of these things here. So, my disclaimer as I start this. This is in no way to reflect on any type of body image issues for women. When I talk about fat cells, when I talk about fat mass on the female frame, there is a purpose for it, right? The female body you know, gains and loses weight or fat completely differently than the male body. And because we aren't taught to understand or know how that works, we often fight against it so much, so much. So this really comes from a, like a science health standpoint, then I want to fit into these pants better, which I mean, if that's your goal. Awesome. Right? Like that's, that's great. But if you've been struggling and can't understand why this is going to be part of it. Yes. Other resources I have for you to look into are my book called The Female Fat Solution. And again, because adipose tissue is so important to understand for the female body, because in and of itself is an endocrine uh, contributor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which we're gonna talk about. How fun is that? This is on Amazon, tons of info in here. Um, and I have a book called The Female Menopause Solution, also tons of info for women who are in the menopause phase. I also have an entire uh, protocol, uh, so uh, the 12 week challenge, I have one for women who have a cycle and I have one for women who are in menopause. Mm -hmm. Learn about both of them on the same wait list. Yes, and uh, my YouTube channel is called Dr. Beth Westy. You can subscribe to that to stay updated. And then my, my podcast is called uh, The Female Health Solution. So I talk a lot about different health aspects and interview some really amazing people there. Yes, so fat cells, let's talk about this. Let's talk about fat cells. Now, one of the first things I wanted to spell is there's like rumors about fat cells, right? Rumors about fat, right? You don't get more or less in terms of number of cells, right? This is important to understand how the body functions because so often we try and do something, right? We're trying to shift our exercise or nutrition or something fundamental, right? To, to, so that we're, we feel like we're being healthier, right? Yes, of course. But if we're not working with the right parameters here, the right information, we're kind of going down the wrong path, right? If you're not given the right map, you can't find the right endpoint. So this is all about learning more about the map, right? So fat cells is really important to understand about fat tissue, adipose tissue, right? Fat throughout our lives is, is something that is static, meaning from the time you're born till you're about seven, you know, you have a higher number of fat cells, number wise. And that it's because of brown fat and other types of fat in the body, right? Babies have brown, so babies are so chubber. She got the chubber cheeks, so cute. Oh, brown fat. <laughs> um, but after about seven, eight-ish, right? You know, humans don't need that type of fat anymore. And then we have fat, the fat remaining is subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. Subcutaneous and visceral. Subcutaneous is like, fat that's underneath the skin everywhere. And for women, you see that in cellulite because our connective tissue is like this. Guess what connective tissue in men is like? Yeah, so they don't have cellulite. Not because they don't have fat in their legs. They just don't have a crisscross pattern, a fascia, that it squeezes and puckers through like a, like one of those lawn chairs, you know? Fascia in females, fascia in males. <sighs> that was a little tangent on fascia and fat cells. It's important to know though, because if you get sucked into buying all these creams to reduce cellulite, blah, blah, blah. No, it's literally how your meat suit is made. The meat suit you live in. It's how it's made. Okay. 
So from about seven or eight on, subcutaneous visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat around your abdomen, right? Internal visceral organ fat that's in there. The visceral fat is connected with higher levels, right? If you have higher visceral fat, you're more likely to have higher levels of like serious diseases, illnesses, conditions, all that type of thing, right? The bad stuff like heart disease, strokes, cancers, all that stuff, right? That's visceral fat. And that's having a big belly that sticks out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also a place where you're going to store toxins. Fat cells specialty is to store toxins. Store toxins. It stores excess hormones, all sorts of fun stuff for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you had the same number of fat cells. You had the same number, unless you've had liposuction or something, and then like physically getting it taken out. Then the number changes. Otherwise, the number that is there is the same from when you were about seven or eight for the rest of your life. Okay. So then why do you gain more or lose more fat? Because the fat cells grow and shrink like a balloon. Oh, like a balloon. There's, there, you know, if, if, if it weren't called fat cells, if we didn't like hate that word or like have such a reaction to it, these cells are actually amazing. They, they, the things that they do are quite impressive, right? They can go from like tiny little flat, tiny little deflated balloons to like huge and all of them like that. Yeah. Yeah. They can do it for women relatively short amount of time, right? <laughs> so great. So great. But that's really what it is. The fat cells, you don't get more. They just grow in size, right? So from here to here, they just grow in size. That's a really important thing to remember. It's because we're not working, at, we're not working on then getting less fat. It's about volume here. So what is it that makes that fat cell grow, right? It's storage. Storage. Storage? What? <laughs> storage. Storage of things. All the things, right? So what does it store? It's going to store things for ener excess energy, right? So this is where you talk about the caloric um, energy, right? Whatever you eat that you're not burning, it gets stored. Oftentimes it's stored as energy and fat cells, right? Yes, you store glycogen and muscle tissue and other parts of the body. Yes, 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 yada, yada, yada. Ha, where is the champion store center? Right here. Champion store center. Oh, yeah. Oh, it can hold on to this for years, for decades, right? I know some of you are like, yeah, yeah, it's been holding on to it for years. Mm -hmm. Like to let it go. Like to release that. Mm -hmm. Yes. What else does it store? What else does it store? Uh, it can store excess hormone. What type of hormone? What do you mean? What do you mean hormone? Oh, cortisols, estrogens, other things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fun, right? And other things like toxins. Why would it store toxins? Why would your body hang on to toxins? Come on. Give me a break. Yeah, it's a protective mechanism for the body. Because if it's not storing and like walling it off and keeping those toxins and keeping everything in here, right? Then that garbage is going to be floating around and your body, you know, wreaking havoc, causing harm, doing damage. So your system's like, oh, I got this. Fat cells are like, oh, we're the champion storage container here. We'll take this on. <laughs> Hold on to it for years. You're welcome. Now, how likely is your body going to be to tap into the energy stores within this cell if there's also garbage locked in there too? Mm, it doesn't like it. doesn't like it. It's not efficient. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. You know what's easier to tap into for energy? Your muscle tissue. This is where you feel like you've been trying to work out and eat really healthy, but you're not able to like really build muscle. Like you're not, you're not getting muscle. You're like, what the heck? Come on. Oh, yeah. This is why. Yep. And you have to force your system and use physiological tactics to make your body tap into this as an energy source. And at the same time, support it in flushing out those toxins. Toxins are a thing. Your body needs to detox. 
because we're bombarded by it. So for anybody who says, you don't need to detox, blah, 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 the body does it. Yes, it's designed to do it on its own, for sure. But if you have hormone issues, immune issues, stress issues, sleep issues, etc., the body is not likely to do it. Yeah. Yep. Liver gets a little bogged down. Can't do it. Can't do it like it should. So you have to use specific tactics to do that. So these are the things that we do in the 12-week challenge. This is what I take you through. Exactly what your system needs to do to physiologically force it to tap into those fat cells, to release the energy, and then support your body in releasing those toxins all the way through the detox pathways. Because they can get stuck. And we, we see that in the Dutch test, right? Where some of these hormones, like, like estrogens, can get stuck in a detox pathway get like log jammed, bottlenecked there and won't release and go all the way through, which means they get transformed into your system and it starts over again. Oh my God. Our systems are just designed in this way where if you're not flushing things out and moving things through, um, they like keep resurfacing. So great. So, so what does that mean? Let's talk about estrogen specifically. For all you gals out there who are estrogen dominant and have suffered with things like PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is what led me to the work that I do now. I had cysts that burst every month for a year and a half after I had my third kid, who's now 10. Year and a half, every month, on the floor, in so much pain. If you've had a cyst burst, you know. Crazy. And this is what I had to go through to start resetting my body and system. <clears throat> so cysts, fibroids, endometriosis, <coughs> All of those things contribute, all of them, and more, right? P uh, PMS, PMDD, mood swings, all of these things are very important, and they're all connected with estrogen and being estrogen dominant, right? If you're not familiar with this, I mean, like, literally Google it, and you'll be like, oh, my God, that's totally me. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of us. So how does this come into play here with all of this stuff, right? Oh, so if your body is estrogen dominant, you have some excess estrogens, right? Right, excess estrogens here, that would play in here. So what your body's gonna do, oh, I got this, I know how to protect you, here we go. We'll, we'll, we'll store it in the fat cells. Oh, there we go, you're welcome. So every time you have to store things in fat cells, guess what happens? They get bigger and bigger and bigger, blowing up a balloon more and more and more. Making it harder to tap into it and use that energy source inside and deflate that fat cell. Making it that much harder, right? So that hormone gets built up to there. Oh, but you know what? You know your fat cells are also really dynamic? You know what they also do? Especially when they are enlarged like this? Yeah, yeah. When you have a larger mass, right? Not a mount but more fat tissue because the volume is bigger, your fat cells actually start to make more estrogens. They make more, they make more, they make more estrogen. They make more estrogen. You're like, what? I'm, these are E's I'm drawing, I swear. I'm just trying to do it too fast. That makes more estrogens on its own. So you're already estrogen dominant. You already have too much of it in your system and it's already storing it. And then because there's so much stuff stored in here, this, your fat cells decide on their own to create more estrogen, which then what happens? Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, so then they're going to grow even bigger. That is how you go from trying to lose weight being restrictive, you know, working your butt off all these things and maybe drop, you know, 10 pounds and you work really hard and you don't feel that great though, like losing energy, ugh, fatigued, all that stuff, brain fog, makes your cycle worse. And then you stop being super strict, that weight comes back with a vengeance and then some. Right here. That's it. Yay. <laughs> so then what? Then what? Yeah, you're like, you know, further behind. You've dug yourself a bigger hole, essentially. Because without targeting the estrogen, without really targeting these things, your system will store more. Right? Your system will store more. It's not about, it's not about eating cleaner. It's not about these magic fat burning supplements. It literally will not work in the female body. Nope, 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 nope. 
That's not how our systems are designed and work and function. And for women, fat cells create more estrogens, which then guess what? That leads to more estrogen dominant issues, making your cycle worse. Yeah. Disrupting your hormones even more. Mm -hmm. Yay. This is a really frustrating place to be. But again, it's not just about doing textbook cookie, cookie cutter things because what works for everybody is not gonna work for you at this point. This is why you need to follow your hormones, follow your physiology, follow your system and what it needs specifically. Because when you're at a point like this, this looks like a mess, right? That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. And then you get stuck and you can't move forward, right? You can't make progress. So honestly, what's the answer? This is what we do in the 12 week challenge. This is why I have a 12 week challenge to walk you through this. Again, if you want to learn more, I listed all those resources at the beginning of this video, my book, my uh, podcast, my YouTube channel. I do this so that you can understand how your body works and functions to work with it better. This isn't like, I don't, I don't want you to view your body and the fat cells it has as like a bad thing, right? It is just how your body functions and it's different than what we've been taught. And all of these, you know, quick methods are cheap shortcuts that end up messing with our hormones, which creates more of a problem for the female body. Ugh. <laughs> Anybody else getting fired up right now? <laughs> like, come on. So these are the things to shift and change. These are the things to pay attention to for your body. How is your body working and responding? How is your system, right, functioning? It's not just about fat and like, oh, let me like squeeze my arm. Oh, I gotta, uh, uh. Your body's not gonna be able to burn fat or increase your metabolism unless you deal with this mess which is what I teach women how to do. And I'm more than happy to guide you through this process. So again, waitlist is in the comments there. Click on that link, learn more about it. If you have questions though, if you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me. If you are struggling with something or if you're wondering, oh my gosh, I have thyroid issues too, or I have these other food allergies or, you know, whatever it is. And you're concerned about that, you know, working that in, let me know, right? I work with everybody in this, in this protocol. Um, making sure that you have the right support. I have a team behind me now. I have Dr. Victoria, who also is amazing, an amazing resource and so knowledgeable, again, with the female body and how things work. This is what we do together in the 12 week challenge. So please make sure you are reaching out and asking questions. Do not sit on something. Do not feel like you have to run around and again and again and again do it. Think about the past five years. How many times have you been frustrated with your body? How many times have you stood in a mirror and stared at your body, wished it would change, felt like a failure, felt like nothing you're doing is right, started something new, hopeful that it would work, but really just worried that it's a, you know, the same old thing with a new coat of paint on it, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. It's really hard to be at that point where you feel like, hope is lost and you're stuck in a body that's not responding. You're not in the driver's seat anymore. When you start to work with your physiology, whole different ball game, whole different ball game. You get to be in control of your system, how it works, how it functions because you're working with the right thing. Again, amazing thing about fat cells. They're, they're really fascinating, right? They do all these things but then have the ability to shrink back down. Incredible, incredible, right? These are, this is a really dynamic, you know, tissue. We just tend to not like it because that's what we're, you know, <sighs> it's part of the things, right? Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully this is, this kind of makes sense, but I did want to touch on this. I've had some questions recently on, um, hormone imbalances and women being told, you know what, you just should lose weight and then your hormones will sort themselves out, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. But if the weight part of it causes 
and contributes to the hormone problem, then you can't, you have to work with the hormone problem and the fat, you know, cells at the same time in order to make progress. That's the, that's the secret, right? That's, that's it. You can't just expect your system to release these things because it won't. In the female body, it is a protective mechanism designed that way. And survival wise, your body doesn't care if it's adding an extra 20, 30, 50, 80 pounds. It doesn't care because it's trying to keep you safe and alive. Yeah. And more and more often now, these are problems for women more and more often because of the stress, because of everything else. It is disrupting our hormones, which creates more of a trickle down effect here. Yeah. Okay. That's what I got for you guys tonight. Please let me know if you have questions, if you need other resources, I am here for you. Otherwise, if you found this helpful, please share it with somebody you know that could use this message. Have a great rest of your night and I will see you later.